Although thirds such as root 2 and root 3 are irrational, they are called constructible numbers. This is because, starting with a line segment of length 1, these lengths can be constructed using only a straight edge, which is a ruler without measurements, and a compass. Example 2 shows how this may be done. So, just a reminder, an irrational number is a number that cannot be written as a fraction. So, p divided by q, for example, where p and q are integers, positive or negative whole numbers. So, an irrational number, such as, such as root 2 and root 3, cannot be written as a fraction. So, a fraction is a rational number. You are given the line segment AB, where the length of AB, or the distance from A to B, is equal to 1. So the distance from A to B is 1 unit. Using only a straight edge and a compass, construct a line segment of length root 2, root 3. In each, justify or explain why the length you have constructed is as stated. So our solution, construct a line through B, so through the point B, perpendicular to AB, perpendicular to the line AB. So if two lines are perpendicular, they meet at right angles. So this is construction four on our course, and the construction lines are shown opposite. So here we have the line segment AB, here we have the point B, and here we have a dotted line that goes through B that is perpendicular to AB. With AB, the line segment AB, as radius and B as center, draw an arc cutting the perpendicular line at C. So we put our compass point on B. We open it out a distance of A, so we would open it out until the pencil tip touches A. So compass point on B, pencil tip on A, and that would give us the distance of the radius. So we put our compass point back on B, and we do not change the distance of our compass. We don't adjust it at all, and we do an arc going through the line that we've just constructed. And where it intersects, we label it as point C. So you don't have to do the full circle. You just have to do a small arc. So just in case you're wondering where these other construction lines came from and you haven't covered construction four yet. So what we do is we place the compass point on B and we open our compass out about halfway the length of AB and we do an arc. Then we lengthen our line on the other side. We can let it be a dotted line. And we do another arc. So this distance must be the same as this distance. So our compass should not be changed. So you put your compass point on B, you open your compass out to about halfway, you do an arc, and then without changing the distance or the width of the compass, you do another arc on the other side. Then you put your compass point on the intersection and you do an arc along this line here. And then again, without changing it, you put the compass point on this intersection and you do another arc and it should go through the, the original arc. And that point of intersection is where we would draw our line, so our dotted line. So that's where that dotted line would come from. So alternatively, you could have just used your set square, which has a right angle. So that's where these construction lines came from. So then the distance from A to C is root 2. So the distance from A to C is root 2. So you can join these two points together. So this is the proof. So from the construction, AB is equal to 1, 1 unit and BC is equal to 1. 
So this was our original line AB, our line segment. And we did not change the compass width when we did our arc along our perpendicular line. So therefore, the distance from B to C is also one unit. So AB is one unit. And BC is also one unit. The angle ABC is equal to 90 degrees. So the angle ABC is 90 degrees. So this is a 90 degree angle. We know that because it's perpendicular. So therefore this is a right angle triangle. So therefore by Pythagoras' theorem, we know that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the adjacent sides squared. So the hypotenuse squared is equal to AB squared plus, A plus BC squared. So this here is the hypotenuse, which is AC. So AC squared is equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 2. And then solving for AC, so basically the squared comes over the equal sign and we get root 2. So the distance from A to C is root 2. So we were asked to construct a line segment of length root 2 and justify the length, justify why that is so. Here is our construction and here is our proof. So next is root 3. So again we start with the line segment AB which is one unit. So down here we have the line segment AB which again is one unit. So we extend the line segment AB and use a compass to mark the point C such that BC is equal to AB which is equal to 1. So we start off with our line segment AB then with the ruler we just extend the line. So whatever distance this was we're calling it one unit but let's say on your page that it was actually five centimeters you just draw another five centimeter line to the right of B. So we're calling this one unit in length and this one unit in length so we have the point C. With AC equal to 2 as the radius and A and C as centres, draw two arcs to intersect at D. So AC must be two units because A to B is one unit and B to C is one unit. So 1 plus 1 makes two units. So from A to C is two units. So we start off with point A and we put our compass point on A and we open it out a distance of two units so we can put our pencil point on C just to get the distance, just to get the radius for our compass. So with our compass point on A and our pencil point on C we can do an arc. Then we do the same on the other side, we put our compass point on C we put our pencil point on A and we do an arc. So with AC equaling 2 as a radius and A and C as centres, draw two arcs to intersect at D. So this point of intersection here we label as D. Then BD is equal to root 3. So the distance from B to D is root 3. So let's see why that is. So our proof. By the construction AD, so AD, draw a dotted line here, is equal to AC. So we know that these are the same length, they are the radii. So AC, then we used our, we had our compass point on A, our pencil point on C, and we drew an arc, so therefore AD is the same length, should be two units. So AD is equal to AC, so AD is equal to AC in length, and it's also equal to CD. So from C to D, it's also equal to CD. And that happens to be equal to two, so two units. 
the triangles ABD, so ABD, so this triangle here on the left that's drawn in, and CBD, so the triangle CBD, are congruent. So that means that they have three equal sides and three equal angles. They're actually a reflection of each other. So I've actually just drawn this line in in blue just to show you. So this is the other triangle. So this triangle, ABD, so ABD, is congruent or equal to this triangle, CBD, CBD. So we can see that one is a reflection of the other. Thus, the angle ABD, so ABD, so this angle here, which is right angled, is equal to the angle CBD, CBD, so this is also right angled, which is equal to 90 degrees. So we have a right angle triangle on the left and a right angle triangle on the right. And they're equal to each other. So again, using Pythagoras' theorem, AD squared, so AD squared, so this is the hypotenuse, is equal to AB squared plus BD squared. And AD squared, so this is a length of 2, so we have 2 squared, is equal to 1 squared, so this is a length of 1, we were told that at the start, plus BD squared. So we pretend that we don't know what this is. So it's equal to BD uh, plus BD squared. So we have 2 squared plus 1 is equal to 1 squared plus BD squared. So then solving for BD, 2 squared is 4. 1 squared is 1, so we have 4 minus 1, which is 3. So BD squared is equal to 3. So solving for BD, we get BD is equal to root 3. So this distance here is root 3.